What is up, everybody? This is Brian with the Mustard and Mayo, and it has been a little bit since I have done any kind of fleet update or project update or any kind of work installing parts, at least on camera. So I figured I would just take a few minutes uh, since I actually have some time to get maybe caught up on some projects. Um, but first off, I'm going to walk around and kind of give you a tour of what's going on with the fleet. All right, so first things first, actually right now, everything is running. I say this, and there's a good chance that any day now, anything that I've got here uh, could quit. But we've got all five vehicles, including the 4Runner, the BMWs up in the garage. But uh, just kind of walking around real quick, uh, the Previa hasn't really had a whole lot of action um, this year. It's taken us to the beach once. Uh, we've driven around some. You know, I drive around just to make sure the battery stays charged up and everything. But uh, minus uh, the door handle breaking back here, because... You know, the inside handle is broken, so why not break the uh, outside handle as well? Minus that breaking, um, there's really not been much of any changes with the van. It's just been pretty rock steady. Last year was a big year where we took it all around to California and back. So, I mean, we got a lot of attention on this. Um, so now it's just kind of on cruise control. The MR2, which is buried under a bunch of cardboard boxes here, um, was running and then it quit running. Basically, um, I had a wiring short. Um, the car would not start kept blowing fuses and I had uh, some mechanic friends that I know uh, really spent some time with it and they actually found that I had a grounded out oxygen sensor wire and had shorted the whole wire all the way almost back to the computer so we had to cut that out um, and I had them rewire that oxygen sensor but ever since it's been running it still runs but every now and then there's a little bit of a funky cutout issue uh, that I did not have before so I don't know if that's related to the oxygen sensor wire or maybe something else that got you know, mess around with probed or something like that while we were in process. Um, but we do have all four new tires on this car finally. We've got BF Goodrich Rival 1.5 S's, which is good because before when this car sat, it had the original set of Rivals that I would bought years ago and they were getting hard. Um, but really, uh, we actually just went to a recent car meet with this car, had a really good time with the drive. And despite the random uh, misfire that just shows up where it cuts out and loses power, uh, this car is actually doing all right. Now, the Celica has been one of the bigger uh, changes that has happened over the last uh, few months, and that is because this has been the car that's actually been parked the longest over the last few years. Um, and that was just because I had started doing a head swap in here. This, is, of course, is the 22R um, that is really popular for the Toyota pickups. But uh, this currently has a 20R head um, with uh, the Makuni side drafts, which had to be uh, redone for this engine. Um, but I could not really get everything back together the way I was uh, hoping to and I had to get some help with uh, You know somebody that was a little bit more qualified than me with these types of engines to kind of get everything working And right now this thing is running pretty good um, I did get a new power steering rack put in as well as some new uh, power steering lines as you can see right here But I am still getting a huge amount of power steering fluid that is leaking out um, So that is something you can kind of see it's all wet through here super wet all through there and if we look down into the floor, I mean, it's just piling. In fact, I'll actually show you where I had this thing parked the other day. This uh, Celica was parked out here for about a week or so. And yeah, you can just see all that power steering fluid that's been pouring out. So I definitely need to figure out what's going on with that. I do think I'm probably going to need to get a new power steering pump, although it seems to be working okay, um, except for the fact that it's leaking. But I'm hoping that maybe I can just find where the leak is. Maybe it's just an O-ring or something like that, and uh, I can do that. But I got a feeling it's probably leaking from the uh, shaft of the power steering pump. So I'll probably have to replace that also, um, but that is not a today project. <clears throat> All right, and just a quick update on my 95 4Runner. Um, so I had put months ago now a uh, new suspension on. We did the Old Man Emu lift, uh, which I do still need to put the ball joint spaces in here, but we got new struts all around. Um, we've done a ton of work with this 4Runner over the last year. This is the one I paid what, $500 for, $600 for, um, but right now it's got a new clutch, it's got the new suspension, I've had all kinds of stuff done with it, I had new brakes installed up front, uh, of course the 33 inch BF Goodrich KO2 tires that we put on here, um, I've also done a new stereo for this car, uh, nothing too crazy, but just new speakers on all four corners, as well as an Android Auto unit here on the dashboard, which I really don't use it for that, but it's got the Bluetooth and the touchscreen, and it's more for that, honestly, more than anything. Um, but this has just been a fantastic vehicle this summer. I've been off-roading with it a few times. Uh, most recently, I did remove the rear bumper 
Uh, for anybody who's seen this car or seen pictures of the previous video, uh, the rear bumper was completely rusted out. And as we can see behind the bumper right here in these rear quarter panels, these are definitely soft and rusted. Um, this uh, side over here on the driver's side is actually probably the worst. And if I can get to it today, you can see there's really not a whole lot of this that's being held on. A little bit right here, a little bit right there, but that's, that's all just, that's done. So there's a good chance today if I can get to this, I'm probably going to go ahead and just cut some of this off. I'm not exactly sure what I'm going to do, but I definitely want to just get rid of some of this rust and figure out you know, how to clean that up so I'm not you know, getting cut or anything there. Last but certainly not least is my 2014 F30 BMW 320i. Uh, and this is the daily driver. This is the road tripper. This is kind of my everyday car, um, which I had previously posted up before. I think when I introed this car, um, just some of the little carbon fiber, which is, you know, really plastic if I'm being honest. But some of just little trim pieces that have been done, the, the red button over there for the uh, stop start. You know, all those kind of little cosmetic things, but I hadn't really done anything mechanical different. Um, so the two big things that have happened, although they aren't huge, is um, I do like these are the BMW 398 wheels. Uh, they're an 18-inch wheel that are a staggered setup. And I've always liked these wheels on these cars. Um, and so I decided rather than spending thousands of dollars for aftermarket wheels and tires, um, I would get some really good wheel spacers to kind of flush out these wheels a little bit more. Um, so I got wheel spacers for the front and the rear. I think I went with a... I think it was an 11 millimeter up front and then maybe a 13 or 15 millimeter, something like that out back. Um, but it looks really good. Uh, tires still fit perfectly within the fenders, but it definitely gives it a much more meaty look than it did before. I'll probably throw some pictures in to kind of show you a little bit, you know, if you can kind of see what's going on. Now, the other big thing was that I actually installed an engine cold air intake, as you can kind of see right here. Um, this was actually the first and probably the only power adder that I've done with this car. Um, this is a pretty common thing for these. Um, actually, I'm forgetting kind of a big one here. But uh, yeah, so I put this on. And if I'm being honest, this was more for the looks and the sounds um, because normally these turbos on these cars are so silent. Um, in their stock form that, you know, you just don't hear anything. You can feel the boost coming on, but it's not anything that's audible. And I feel like you're kind of missing out on the experience. If I'm going to daily drive a turbo car, I'd like for it to make turbo noises. So I get a little bit of noise, kind of like boost surge that's coming through the intake. But I did actually pair that. You can actually see that this is probably the next pipe that I need to upgrade right here. But um, the other thing that I did is I did a boot mod three stage one tune. And that actually should take this car from about... 180 horsepower to somewhere around 260 or 270 uh, with about the same kind of increase in torque and I'll actually throw a little bit of video of that in here But yeah, that, that mod right there uh, has probably been my favorite thing. I did those two at the same time. I put the cold air intake on and then I uh, tuned it myself about a week later. And man, what a difference. The funny thing about having the tune and the intake on the BMW is I've driven it up in the mountains since I had that done. And it's so funny. Before, I thought that car was perfectly well balanced with the power, with the grip, with the handling. You know, I thought the brakes were maybe a little bit weak uh, since it is the base model brakes on those cars. Uh, but now that I've got another, like, maybe 80 horsepower that wasn't there before, um, there's a lot more speed that I can take going into corners. So that means that there's going to have to be a point down the road where I'm more than likely going to have to uh, put at least a better brake pad on that car. And honestly, I'm probably going to have to put a little bit of a nicer tire at some point. But that's not going to happen right now. That car is doing just great. I'm not driving it like that all the time. Um, but it does kind of unbalance the car a little bit. But, man, the power feels incredible. Um, and it's still cool how it works between the eco and the comfort and the sport modes. You can actually tell a difference uh, between all those modes. All right, so now that we're all caught up, let's just go ahead and kind of walk around and show you some of the stuff that I'm going to be doing today. None of it's too big, honestly. Uh, it's just a lot of little stuff that's been kind of stacking up for a while. Uh, mainly stuff for the Celica and the Forerunner. And then if I can get to it, I'm hoping to do a little bit of that wiring project here on the MR2. But yeah, I'll kind of walk around and show you what I've got here. All right, so for the Celica, as far as new parts go, um, I have not done anything with the stereo on this car in a long time. I had put, years ago, long before this car was parked, I had put in this uh, CD player that you can see here, 
And uh, there is no Bluetooth on this unit, but it does actually have a screen that pops out. And it was actually kind of cool. Um, it was something that I had in my MR2 a long time ago. And when this car needed some kind of stereo upgrade, I threw that in. But then you can also kind of see uh, my speaker upgrade situation is, is kind of crappy, if we're being honest. So I, I shoved the rear, I think, paper-coned 4x6-inch speakers in a real janky situation up here on the dashboard. You can see it's the same on both sides. Uh, those are pretty crappy speakers. And then, uh, like the Genius I once used to be, I basically uh, removed the wires for where they would normally be uh, right back here in the, uh, if you see there's a little bit of a hole right here. Uh, this is where the speakers would normally be, the 4x6s in the rear. And there's another one over there basically on that rear shock tower. But I had removed all of that, thinking that I could get a better stereo setup if I added this like you know cheap aftermarket box. But honestly, those speakers sound like crap, and um, they're always you know, falling down and, and moving all over the place. So I'm going to remove those, and then I'm going to actually re-add 4x6-inch speakers to the uh, rear towers. And then I'm going to actually replace 4-inch speakers on the dashboard so I can kind of get back to um, you know, a little bit better audio quality. So that's what these are. Um, I've been really happy with the kicker speakers. At this point, I now have kicker speakers in the Previa, in the two front dashboard speakers of the MR2 and all of the speakers that are up the hill in the 4Runner. Um, it's just the best ones that I've tried, at least out of the smaller speaker setup, and they're not super expensive. I think they're like maybe 60 bucks or 80 bucks for a pair or something like that. Um, and just because I'm not trying to spend a ton of money on this car, but I do want Bluetooth, this is going to be the new stereo to go in it. It's, you know, probably a $30, $40 stereo. It's got good reviews. You know, it's basically just Bluetooth and FM. You know, it's, that's really all I need on this thing. So we'll get that so I can actually play music in the car. And this is another item that I've been using in pretty much every car. Uh, the Previa has one um, because the speedometer is inaccurate on that car. The MR2 has one because the speedometer doesn't work at all. And now the Celica is going to have one of these too. And this is just a GPS, um, you know, they call it a heads-up display. But it just kind of, you can stick it on the dashboard somewhere. And I've actually tested it. It does really good at being accurate with the speedometer. Uh, because this car has a problem where the speedometer needle literally bounces around uh, with about a 10 mile an hour swing. So, And honestly, it's not even right where that's at. So this is going to stick right here on the dashboard or on the steering wheel column like I've done with the other cars. Uh, that way when I'm actually driving this car... Um, you know, if I decide to drive to work or something, I can actually have some vague idea of what I'm doing speed-wise. So these are going to go in. Um, the other thing that I'm hoping to start today is you can see this car has definitely picked up a patina. Um, unfortunately, this car just sat outside for so long. Um, and this car has always been called a Rust Elica. So, you know, a lot of these rust pockets that are showing up um, here and here. This is actually rust that apparently hasn't come back through uh, since I had repaired this years ago. Uh, you can see where it is coming back through here on the window. Um, the fenders here, since I had these flared, which this needs to get pulled a little bit more. It's one of the things to do today. As you can see, it's kind of rubbing the tire, which I did get new tires for this also. So these are the Hankook RS4s, uh, since, again, I had old ones on here. Uh, but as you can see, these are rubbing. I don't know why the older Hankooks weren't, uh, but these definitely are. So I need to get up under here and hammer that fender out a little bit and make sure that there's clearance there. Um, but, yeah, I'm hoping to maybe go around and re-sand off some of this rust. I don't know if I'm gonna have time today because uh, it's gonna be a little bit of time to do this, but you can see the green paint has faded over time, uh, which is kind of what happens with those flat kind of camo paints. Uh, but I do wanna respray this whole car hopefully soon, um, including the hood. It's just sat out in the sun, and then there's you know lots of, all these dots are tree sap from where I used to live. So this car is not meant to look great, but it's definitely looked better um, over time. So I'm hoping to get back in here and redo all this. I'll probably have to get these uh, stickers redone, uh, which that's not too hard to do. But those are my autocross stickers. Make it look like a little, you know, army jeep. Um, so yeah, just a lot of little things here. The first thing I'm going to end up doing today, though, is going to be messing around with the 4Runner. So uh, no real aftermarket parts or anything, but um, I have been planning on for a while now getting in and actually uh, camping inside that 4Runner. So I've got a ton of stuff in these boxes that are all stacked up here on this poor MR2. Um, so I've got stuff like mattress pads. I've got all kinds of things uh, like different straps to go on the inside of the windows. Um, these are spark plugs for... Actually, those are spark plugs for the MR or for the BMW. I forgot that I had those. That's sad. Um, all kinds of just little just camping accessories. Um, here's like a little camping fan. Um, just all kinds of weird little things that I'm going to be putting in. That there's a camp stove. 
um, in the white box are traction boards. And then jury's out right now on this light bar kit that I ordered on if this is going to go on the forerunner or if I might just reuse the wiring that I already have for the Celica and put some LEDs on the Celica. But this is probably going to go on the forerunner more than anything since I did do LED headlights on that car just recently. Um, but that's going to be one of the things we're going to put on. But then I'm also going to grab, I've got a really cool tent, which is going to go on the back of the forerunner. So I'm probably just going to get all this stuff out of the boxes get it all set up and just make sure that my camping setup works. And then I'll figure out my storage solution for keeping it all stored or secure it. I'll probably tie those onto the uh, roof rack. So yeah, a lot of talking. Now let's uh, get to working. Alrighty, so I've got a little bit of a mess with boxes and trash and all the stuff everywhere, but I was able to get pretty much everything set up on the Forerunner for a test fit. So this is actually going to be uh, my camping setup on the Forerunner. Um, so let me kind of walk around and kind of show you how this thing works. All right, so this is the actual tent, um, as you can see on the picture on the box. Uh, the way this is actually intended to work is, as you can see here, with a pickup truck with a camper cover on it, if you've got the glass on the back, you can lift that up and it basically supports and extends the roof. But it basically means that when you put the tailgate down on a pickup truck, you can basically cap off the end of it and turn it into a tent where you can go in and out and actually seal it off and everything there. Um, or they do have a picture somewhere here where you can see if you've got like a minivan or like an SUV with a hatchback, um, you can get kind of the same setup um, out of it there. Um, you can see there's another SUV picture there. So what I figured this would work with is because the second gen 4 runners do have the tailgate that comes down, but I also knew that I don't have a camper cover obviously on this because it's a 4 runner. Um, so I had to figure out some way to support the roof. So I also knew that I was gonna be getting my traction boards in. And if we kind of take a peek up underneath of here, normally the traction boards are gonna be uh, secured here on the uh, roof rack, which is something I've got to figure out. But when they're not being used, I can actually lock them in place up here. And those lugs pretty much hold that in, in place there really solidly. So what it does now is it supports the back end of the roof here and actually does a pretty good job at, at keeping those in place, um, at least for camping. That way it's got like this nice, you know, boxy end. Uh, but really all it does is just kind of like a cap at the end. So you can see it's got built-in bungee cords, uh, which I hope do last. Um, but they look like they're pretty solid bungee cords. It goes all the way around the bottom of the tailgate. You can see it fits right up underneath here perfectly. There's all these little straps and stuff so you can tie down um, all the different uh, covers. Um, so that's strapped in. Right now I've just got it kind of hooked in into the sway bar end link. And then you've got these on the front, uh, which hold the top down. And I'm not going to lie, these are a little bit longer than I feel like they need to be. Um, but <laughs> right, I was able to stretch them all the way up here to the front of the grill. So you can see both of these go all the way forward um, around the eight pillars and it basically holds the top in place there. Um, so I think that actually works out pretty well. And then I'm pretty sure in the box to give you another uh, bungee cord, I guess, in case one of those snap. All right, so as you can see, you've got zippers. You've actually got uh, two different ways you can open this up. So you can open it up um, the whole entire way or maybe just half of it if you want to. But you can see you do have a mosquito net here. Um, so I knew that this was going to have a way to basically seal off but still get some airflow. So to actually have airflow, I knew I wanted to have another entrance. So I picked up, and most of this was from Amazon by the way. So I got this sunroof mosquito net which basically is held on with a bunch of magnets that are right here along the edges. And this is like the largest one I think I could find on Amazon. And it literally fits perfectly over the sunroof so that way if I do want to camp and it's warmer weather, I can open up the sunroof and I can slap that thing on and I shouldn't have, as you can see, you know, debris coming in or uh, mosquitoes, bugs, things like that. You know, technically there's tiny little gaps here and there where I'm sure a bug could find its way in, but uh, I feel like that happens anyway with camping as it is. If I wanted to, I could tape it down or something if it was really bad, um, but so that goes in place. That way I can have all the windows up, which will eventually be tinted as well, so I get better privacy out of it. Um, but that way you can have uh, full airflow going through. Uh, now, I'm not sure if I'm going to keep this in here. Speaking of airflow, this is a fan that's really meant for a tent. You know, normally the tent has a little hook at the top, so you just hang that there. Um, but this has a light built in as well as the fan itself. And uh, it's pretty cool, actually. It's got amber lights and stuff. 
And the fan is actually really strong. It runs off of, I think, D-cell batteries. Um, but I was able to just kind of hang it right here. So that's something I don't know if I'm going to keep with the 4Runner, uh, just because it does seem to work better probably with a tent. But uh, we'll see. You know, maybe first time I go camping, I'll bring it out just to see um, if it works or not. All right, so now if we look at the interior, this is actually a really cool self-inflating uh, mattress pad that I found that's typically built more for um, SUVs um, that have like a hatchback and stuff, but the dimensions are almost perfect on this anyway. There are these little side pouches and these pillows that you can pump up by hand, or they do have like a little hair, uh, air pump that you can kind of pump them up with, uh, which kind of act as pillows. I'm not sure if I'm going to have it like this or if I'm going to flip it around and maybe just forego the pillows because it does seem to fit better with this rotated around the other way. Um, so that way it maybe won't, you know, catch right here on the tire. Uh, but for now, I've got it set in there. Um, but you can kind of see I've got obviously my sleeping bag in here. And then about the only things that I've done for now is uh, I have two more in case I need to use them. But there are these really nice uh, suction cup strap mounts that I got uh, about four of or so. So I can hook things onto the window if I want to, like, you know, maybe bags, things like that. Um, but you can see I'm using two on the very back there to hold the uh, straps in for this, which I'll show in a second, as well as just kind of running these, you know, LED lights. You know, you got to have the LED lights if you're going to camp a little way to just kind of tie the cords up up there and what's neat about these leds is they actually run off of a battery pack so there's no power needed except for a battery cell so as long as you've got one of these and i can't imagine these leds draw a whole lot of power so I'll basically i'll be able to keep one of these around just for these lights uh but pretty cool gives us some you know ambiance or whatever at nighttime. and then the other thing i picked up because i've seen them used enough before is these really cool uh, roof organizers here, which doesn't really cut into my headroom a ton, but it does give me basically, I don't really care for the pockets so much up here. Um, cause there is a zipper that goes the whole way. So I could throw things in here, but what I like is being able to just throw some clothes on top of here. So that way, when I go camping or something like that, if I want to throw up my sleeping bag somewhere or the pillow or whatever, I can just throw all this stuff in here and it's not held on with bungees. It's actually got straps as you can kind of see here. Goodness gracious. Ugh. Here we go, as you can see here, I've got them going from the handles and then back there to the uh, the suction cups, as I, like I pointed out earlier. I may order or install some sort of like a hook that screws into the roof up here, just so it makes this a little bit more flush to the roof. Uh, but so far, I think it's gonna work out well. Um, or maybe down the road, I'll flip flop this thing around so it faces the other way and it's not so far forward. I don't know, it's just kind of a, a beta I'm testing out, um, but that'll give me some extra storage just so I can keep stuff in there in case maybe me and my wife wanna go back here. So outside of just test fitting all this stuff, because I really just want to make sure that the uh, tent would work out well and that the air mattress and everything would fit decently well. I've always carried stuff around. Like you can see all down here on the ground, I've got, you know, my air compressor. I've got, you know, basic recovery stuff like a kinetic rope, toe straps. Um, I've got like a little uh, shovel, a saw. I was carrying an axe around, but I think I'm going to carry a handsaw just because it's a little bit smaller and lighter. Um, but I've got all this stuff that's just always kind of been loose or like just in a big plastic tote. So uh, really the rest of today for me when it comes to the full runner is just to figure out a really good storage solution. Uh, maybe like a roof box or just something I can throw into the tailgate here um, to keep the recovery gear in and then a separate tote for all the camping gear, including the tent. Um, so that'll be probably the last of my projects for the full runner today outside of like securing the recovery boards and stuff like that. But uh, either way, I'm pretty happy with this setup and I'm hoping I can use it here in the next few weeks. All right, so it has been a few days uh, since the last time I worked on the Celica and the 4Runner. Uh, so this is just going to be a quick recap of how I got things resolved. All right, so for the time being, this is my storage box for some of the camping gear here. I am probably going to get something a little bit uh, more sturdy and more rugged so that it doesn't break over time. Um, but I picked up a few extra things that I needed to finish things up. So, of course, I got my propane tank for the heater. And instead of carrying around that massive, huge axe, uh, which I've really never used, but it's always good to have, I figured I'd grab a hatchet and a handsaw, which I could also use for making firewood in a camping situation. But uh, these are way more easier to store than a big old heavy axe, which I got to worry about, you know, rusting and, and all of that kind of stuff in the weight. But all of the stuff that I normally use is in here, sleeping bags, um, all of the air mattress for the 4Runner, the fan, the camping stove, all of that is in here right now. And then you can also see for uh, when I do go out, I also have a, uh, this is an actual cooler. It's a cooler and a heat box that you can plug up. Um, so that'll go. And then just in case I need for, for more stuff, I've got a full-size camping stove, some more chairs, blankets, all kinds of stuff there. 
And then I also got these uh, lashing straps right here. These are, I think, one-inch straps that are about maybe six to nine inches long in length, maybe a foot long. But uh, these are holding on the traction bars on the 4Runner. But yeah, 4Runner is set. And here are those traction bars lashed up onto the roof here. And then I still need to get uh, some sort of a roof box or some sort of a storage situation to put over here on the right side for some of that recovery gear. All right, so moving on to the Celica. I did actually have a pretty good, successful uh, working day. I got the new stereo in. I also fixed the wiring that was messed up for the cigarette lighter, as well as a couple other things that were just wired incorrectly up in the dashboard. So I got all that cleaned up. As you can see, the dash pad is on there. Um, here's the new speakers put on, which I forgot that the Celicas don't have a four inch speaker like every other Toyota seems to have. They actually have a three and a half inch or three inch speaker. So I made them work. They're not in there beautifully. Um, I did use the grills. You can basically see I've just got them screwed into the dashboard, but uh, they are in there and they do sound decent. As for the rear speakers, I do need to throw these in. Uh, mainly because I also forgot that once you take out the actual speaker assembly in here, um, you have to get a larger speaker. So that's actually good for this car because I can fit a 5x7 in there and that'll actually sound decent for what this car can have. So the main thing that's holding the Celica back right now is mechanically it's uh, sitting right now because I have another alternator failure. Um, I keep having alternator failures. I've always had alternator failures with all of my older Toyotas. So I've got to track down another one. But I'm also going to go ahead and take care of a power steering leak, which I think could be part of the problem there, even though I've you know, not had problems for a long time. Um, so I still think it's a compound issue. So I need to get a power steering pump and make sure I've got all the leaks fixed because it sits right above the alternator. And then I'll get another alternator and throw that on. It does run and drive right now, but the voltage regulator is out, which causes the battery to overcharge. So the Celica is parked. Also, the MR2 is no longer sitting here because I've got it dropped off at the shop in Asheville. I'm at the dealership where they are hopefully going to figure out what's going on with the fuel cut issue that I'm having. Well, I think it's an ignition cut issue that's going on. So I've got some parts on order for that. We're just going to give it a full tune up, drive it again, uh, see if it replicates the problems and then trace it backwards through the ignition system. Um, so unfortunately the MR2 uh, since my last video is uh, running, but down for the count because it's not running right. The big final fleet up update for this video is uh, since my last recording, I actually finally got the wheels painted on my uh, F30 here. Um, I think I'd mentioned earlier that I actually put on wheel spacers. I think I went with like a 12 millimeter front and a 15 millimeter rear, uh, which I really liked the way it flushed out the wheels, but I also wanted to do something different for the look. So now these 18 inch BMW 598 wheels have been painted in orbit gray, which is actually an option they had for these wheels on some of the higher trim uh, 3 Series and 4 Series, things like that. But I think it really finishes out the look. I'll probably throw on some photos here of how it actually looks when it's, you know, sitting outside. But I just really want to do something different than just having the black on black like everybody does. And my only complaint with having a black car with the silver wheels was that it was just kind of too much contrast in photos was just kind of hard because you had the washed out wheels and then you had the blacked out car so it was just kind of hard to do plus they were always hard to keep clean um so now these are on there and they look fantastic so yeah pretty much a really long video i know a lot of little stuff going on but it's been a little bit since i had put a video up on youtube about what's going on with all these different cars uh and it's just always lots of little things going on so i'm pretty happy with where things are going it's just a slow process when you've got as many cars as I do that you're working on and I'm really only doing it myself and trying to do some of the work myself versus blowing out all my money and paying someone to do so. Uh, but still, I thought it was a worthy update. So as always, uh, if you're curious on any of the stuff that I'm working on, feel free to leave me some comments in there uh, in case there's something maybe I forgot that you saw that you want to talk about. But as always, thanks for watching and have a great day.